Hey everybody, this is GT. Hey, I'm Marcus. And our last video was collection part one. Now we're heading into collection part two. In the last video, we talked about how you can collect data from really three different places. So data, metrics, everything about your network from uh, the client device uh, with like a client agent with an overlay system, which could be Wi-Fi sensors or a separate piece of hardware that collects data over the wire. And the third is your infrastructure, which is your actual access points, your actual switches, routers, et cetera. So even if you just think about troubleshooting clients across the stack, you start at layer one or, or layer two, layer one and layer two. And let's just say that there's like 10 sort of essential layer one and layer two metrics. There's like RF utilization, signal strength, SNR, MCS rates, retries, errors, you know, port utilization on switch ports. Um, you know, there's a number of different metrics. And so let's say there's 10 to 15 or so that you really care about. Then you move up the stack to IP layer. And now you've got, you know, different IP details so that you can look at flow data and maybe start to break down traffic destinations, top talkers, top users. Then you go to layer four, where now we start to get into more interesting application goodies like some of the TCP details, retries, you know, looking at, um, you know, different, TCP health metrics, basically. And then, of course, going all the way up to layer seven with DPI, you can start to extract, you know, metadata about the application health, health itself, you know, latency, um, you know, jitter, as well as what application you're even talking about so that you can think about health and QoE from an application specific perspective. So just there's a variety of metrics, lots and lots of metrics. Yeah, I wrote down about, I don't know, a third of what you said, just because I couldn't make it fit on the screen, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, we're going we're gonna to use this little, uh, this as, as, a, as a way to, to talk about these things. But there's also, so Marcus, you listed a ton of different data points, which I'm sure there's dozens and dozens more. Right, yeah. So it's not only the data that you're talking about, there's another component to that, which is how often do you sample each of these pieces of data? Because when I think about things, and I think a, a problem that we've kind of gotten into a little bit is we think, I think in packets, right? So we do a packet capture and I see, you know, all of, a lot of this information in a packet, right? but that's on a per packet basis. Is that even realistic for a system to be, you know, collecting and delivering on that data? Right. Yeah. Yeah. We can get ourselves into an interesting sort of bind to where we start to think through that lens of all the packets all the time. And it just doesn't work that way. So there's kind of actually three terms that they use for this. One is like a measurement or a sampling interval. One is an aggregation interval. And then one is a reporting interval. So if you think about the collector's function, like this sampling or measurement interval means we're not we're not measuring every single frame or every single packet. Like we might measure some sample of every 10 seconds or every 30 seconds of packets. And so for a given client, you might say, we measure 10 times within 10 seconds. And then we roll that up into a 10 second average. And so like you're not getting a sample of every single frame just because the you know like the processing cost and challenge to doing that is is fairly expensive and so you find a sampling rate i mean it's the same thing with like netflow versus sflow it's like sflow the jewel of sflow is like we don't need to sample every single you know packet in order to get the same sort of representation so there's kind of this sampling challenge that happens to make sure we're getting enough of a representative sample without requiring the cost of sampling everything yeah, and you actually used a word that I like, which is cost. In fact, I'm going to just write a little thing out here. Is is um, you know we're going to look at uh, uh, we're going to look at this like here. Like I'm going to, I'm filling this in here. We're going to call uh, this uh, a processing unit. And, and what we're really talking about is where is the cost. Why is it that Marcus is saying you have to make a choice? He's talking about averages and we're talking about you know, all of this. Why is that? So what we're going to say is let's pretend you have a device. We're going to say a wireless access point. And it's got, it's the latest and greatest model. And it's got 100 PUs, processing <laughs> I, units. I like that metric. <laughs> <laughs> I also have 100 Put PUs. that on your data sheet. <laughs> Nice. I'm sure you're now wise. this, by the way, the processing units is something that Marcus and I made up to illustrate this. So just to make sure that's clear. But, you know, through all these metrics and just some example metrics on my screen here is that, you know, we may say, all right, you know, we're going to have, you know, some that are really stronger than others. Um, oops, uh, I don't know what I did there. But, uh, you know, you, you have these different uh, balances that throughout this whole system. Let me... Uh, 
um, switch colors here, so back to our purple. So, so what you may see is that, okay, we're using you know, certain numbers of these processing units in each one. But what, what I think we're illustrating here that you'll see here is that there's a balance that is made that, that if you want, for example, and ex uh, let me just put this in here. Uh, so I have applications in here, Marcus. We're going to call this also uh, DPI. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, uh, I'll just write this in purple here. DPI, that wasn't really very well. <laughs> but um, let's say you want to do DPI, which is, uh, again, deep packet analysis. That takes a lot of processing units. I'm actually going even off the screen here. Uh, that just takes a lot to process. So that, if we do this, now I'm going to pull out my eraser here. And let's say, okay, we decided to enable DPI. What that's going to do is, okay, you have to actually come down on some other things that you're doing. You, you've run out. Yeah. of of, uh, of processing units yeah the whole point you know is is that um you know you you have some ceiling from a processing perspective and so you've got to decide and i would say when i say you'd have to decide the vendor ultimately has to decide you know to some extent the user does if it's like enabling layer 7 dpi or something T typically we, we don't steal those processing units from like the collection of other metrics but they might be stolen from like you know user you know, user processing tasks. So like being able to serve fewer users or being able to, you know, serve less throughput. But the whole point is an access point has a ceiling and has a limit on its processing capabilities. So, you know, you kind of have to intelligently decide how you want to divide up that processing capability across all the potential functions of the AP, including data collection. Yeah, and some notes that I'm making here as you're talking, uh, I'm kind of going backwards a bit, but you know, this AP that I talked about, the 100 processing unit access point, maybe that's the latest and greatest access point you have, but your customers have older access points that we still want them to use this feature. Uh, contrary to maybe some belief that, you know, we actually want all these features to be backwards possible, uh, compatible, uh, because it just empowers you as the customer to be able to do this. I sound like a marketing guy right now. But, uh, <laughs> but just to keep in mind that there is, you know, let's just say the, uh, maybe a lower access point, new, but maybe a, a little bit lower model, maybe has 80 processing units, but then there's a legacy one that you may have already installed and maybe it only has 30. Then there becomes a point when, uh, you know, maybe that one that's 30, maybe it can't run DPI. Maybe it just doesn't have those processing, you know, the amount of processor and memory to run something like DPI, and that happens. Um, it's not intentional, but it's, you know, like we've talked about before, that AP was designed seven years ago. Yeah. Uh, we did, like we talked about in the last video, we don't know what that is, what the needs are seven years from now. We do our best. So we're kind of wrapping up here and talking about collection and, and what you figure, you know, I figured out a few hours ago is that this requires two videos. So we appreciate you guys sticking through the second video <laughs> here. But what, what's the ultimate, where's this going, Marcus? So, so the, the, we're talking about this collection and the complexities really are cost driven as we've talked about on this you yeah. know, scratch yeah. sheet that I've talked about. But what's the, what's, why does this matter? Where, where are we going with that? Well, I mean, when you put it into the context, I mean, back to our data pipeline videos, that collection is one stage in a pipeline in order to solve an ultimate use case with data. And so, you know, if we think about those use cases being like data science, ML, or AI driven, you know, it's ultimately we need to make sure that we have enough of the right data in the right granularity to solve the machine learning and AI use cases and problems that we want to solve. And so, you know, you kind of start there and then you work backwards to say, okay, what data do we need in order to solve the problem? And sometimes you layer machine learning on top of, you know, you might have a machine learning algorithm to solve a problem, but you might need to layer another piece of machine learning on top to solve the data problem to even solve the machine learning problem. Like if that makes sense, it's kind of an interesting, you, you can create layers of machine learning just to solve problems with like insufficient data or, you know, the data is not sampled as often as we want or whatever. That's interesting. I mean, it's just the more I learn about this, the more there's a lot of decisions made. I hear people say, well, Wi-Fi is commoditized now. And, you know, maybe the, the chipset or maybe the hardware in some cases are. Right. But, you know, we're at the first stage of this pipeline and we already have, you know, uh, engineers and, and product managers making a lot of significant decisions that are going to affect this whole pipeline 
Yeah. And I think that's where we need to leave it. I think we have another, we have a bunch of videos coming up on this pipeline, but I'm finding it super interesting. So I appreciate you uh, educating me as always. Oh, dude, I'm getting the education as we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, we appreciate it. Uh, thanks everybody for your time and uh, keep on listening. Yeah, thanks people. Dude, I am so horrible at closing. I have no idea what to say. Thanks, people. <laughs> Dude, that's fine. Such an idiot. <laughs> so that recording was. Can we just inc can we just include that in the end and just leave that like dull like three seconds of the closing and then I can say that like, dude, I'm such an idiot in the closing. I have no idea what to say, and then we laugh at each other, <laughs> or you guys la you laugh at me.